Porygon Z is pretty powerful. Let's try it out. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Dr. Banana Man. Again, apparently this is his third time facing this team, which is hilarious to me. So um, we lead off with our Glimora. They lead off with the Orphworm. Now, obviously, this is his team on the right. Feel free to have a gander, have an anal analysis of it. <laughs> and uh, feel free to pause it on there as well if you want to. So um, we're going to get Stealth Frogs up straight away. Um, because there's no reason not to. Now, I'm hoping that this isn't a Shed Tail off Worm, because that would be against Smogon rules. But you know what? It's whatever. If it is, it is. Um, no, this Stealth Rock, so that's fine. Uh, we obviously can't Rapid Spin against this thing, or Mortal Spin, sorry, being a Steel type. Um, so what we'll have to do here is we'll have to get on out of there. Now, I'm leaning towards the Pre-Marina switch. I'm just trying to think what they would do here, because we can't Earth Power them, we can't Sludge Wave them. Got Mortal Spin then, we've already set up Stealth Rocks. We have to switch out here, they know this. But what would we go into? Probably going to be Corviknight or Primarina. I'd say Primarina is the best way to go. So they might they might predict the switch and go for something else. They might go for um, Switch Out, for example, into Limited Rillaboom. And Stones do dig into us though. And uh, they go for an Iron Defense, which is fine. Because we're going to hit on the special side. Now, we should outspeed here, so I'm going to go for a Surf. They withdraw Orphworm. What are they going to go into to take a Surf? Probably going to be the Empoleon, right? Empoleon is going to come in. The Pokemon Fan. So, Empoleon comes in. Stones do dig in, which is nice. So, we're going to get some nice chip damage here. As there's the Surf, it does a nice bit of chip damage, like I say. We should outspeed, so I'm free to go for a Flip Turn here, I think. I definitely think we're free to go for a Flip Turn. They more than likely go for a Grass Knot, but they could go for Flash Cannon, so I have to be careful here. So let's go for a Flip Turn now. Boom. Bit more Chip. Can't really complain about the Chip. And uh, what we'll do is, I want to go Nine Tails, but they could easily Flash Cannon here. So what's a more neutral play? What's a more neutral play? I'd say Corviknight. Because it'll take Grass Knot and Flash Cannon. So we'll go Corviknight now. There we go, Corviknight comes in. Stones dig in, which is unfortunate. They go for the Grass Nut, which is good. That's going to do no damage. And they are going to get some Rocky Helmet Chip, because Grass Nut is a contact move, weirdly enough. Very weird that it's a contact move. But I ain't complaining because it gives me Rocky Helmet Chip, you know? So let's go for a U-turn here, because they're more than likely going to switch out. And if they don't switch out, they're going to go for a Water Time move. They do withdraw. They do withdraw. They don't want to get hit by a Body Press, which is fair enough. Um, and they're going to go into the Azelf, which would resist the body press normally, but we obviously went for a U-turn. So this has worked out nicely for us, because what we can do is we can go for the U-turn, get some nice damage off on the Azelf, and then we can go into the Ninetales and get the Aurora Veil going. And since the Empoleon's already weakened, we're in a very good position. So I'm going to go with Ninetales now. We are going to take some Stealth Rock Chip, but I'm pretty confident we can live a Flamethrower. I'm fairly confident we can live a Flamethrower. I'm kind of confident. I'm nearly confident. So no one is going to come through. And we go for the Aurora Veil. I think we might outspeed, actually. No, the Zell's way too fast, if I remember rightly. Yeah. Flamethrower comes through. We should live that, right? <gasps> no, we don't. Okay. That's fine. So, this is interesting for us. So, they are Life Orb, which is why that KO'd. Interesting. I don't face his Elf very much, so I was a bit unsure. I probably should have scouted to see what he was going to do. Going to Pre Marina, maybe. You know? Pre, Pre Marina would have been a good one. Um, do I bring Porygon Z in now? We'll play it safe. We'll go, Pori we'll go Pre Marina first. I don't think I want to set up on this thing because it is life orb after all. I'll do a lot of damage to Porygon Z. So um, I'd rather put this in instead. And we can just go straight for a Moonblast or a Surf. Um, I'm leaning towards the Moonblast. I will be real. I'm leaning towards the Moonblast. They go for an Energy Ball. That's interesting. So we're a Salt Vest. So we can definitely take that. We can definitely take that. And then we just go for a Moonblast and KO this thing. So that's fine. A Zelf going down is great. Absolutely great. Absolutely fantastic, in fact. All right, poor Mark comes in. This thing is going to ruin us. I can't foresee Pre Marina being very useful for us anymore. So just to stop them from going for a Revival Blessing, I'm going to go for a Moonblast. They go for a Thunder Punch, though. That's going to take out Pre Marina. That's fine. That's fine. So this could be a good opportunity for us. We could bring Porygon Z in. Go for an Agility. Terra Ghost, so we are immune to the close combat. Um, or we can just go into Cerule Edge. Or we can go into uh, Glimora and go for a Mortal Spin. That's always an option. Always an option. 
I'm tempted to go Porygon Z, but it does reveal that we're heavy duty boots, that's the problem. I'm gonna go Porygon Z. Screw it, we're gonna do it now. We're doing it now? We're doing it now? We are doing it now. Because I'm pretty sure that Earthworm is only attacking moves gonna be body press. So Terra Ghost, Agility. That's what we're gonna go for right now. We'll go Terra Ghost Agility. Now, I don't know whether Terra Ghost and Adaptability actually combine like they like I think they do. I'm hoping they do, but I don't think they do. Boom, so they're probably on Z Terra Ghost. They go for a Thunder Punch, which is gonna sting a little bit. No paralysis, no paralysis, which is great. So we get the agility off. Which is fantastic. We're immune to mock punch. Which is great. And uh, do we go for a tri attack or a shadow ball? Should I just go for the shadow ball anyway? I'm just going for the shadow ball anyway. They withdraw the Palmer anyway, so they're probably going to go off worm, right? And Polion comes in. That's fine. Polion comes in, gets some stealth rock chip. We go for a shadow ball. That's going to do a lot of damage to the Empoleon, that's for sure. Yeah, I think it, I think his ability to just stack with Terra Ghost based on that based on that damage because Empoleon is quite specially bulky, you know. Rillaboom comes in there. This is the thing that I was afraid of because of the Grassy Glide. That's the thing I was afraid of because of the Grassy Glide. So what we'll do is we can still sell all over Orphworm. Um, we'll go into they have to go for Grassy Glide here. In which case we should go Cerule Edge and get the weak armor. We should go through Rillaboom and get the weak armor. I think. Because they don't have a switch into Bitter Blade. So we should be able to take out the Rillaboom right here, right now. Should. So stones dig in. They go for a Grassy Glide. It's... Oh! Oh! The weak armor is not going to work now. Because the weak armor lowers our defense. I didn't think it would do that much damage. We do get health back. Which is something, I guess. But we're going to have to go for a Bitter Blade. They go for a Grassy Glide. It's going to take us out. Yeah, it's going to take us out. So Cerulege goes down. But it's fine, we got Corviknight in the back. We don't need Surilich to win this game. I didn't think Grassy Glide would do that much, but they must be banded or something. Let's go Corviknight now. And again, they don't have much of a Brave Bird switch in other than Orphworm. So I'm gonna U-turn here. The hard switch proving they are probably choice banded. I normally see Assault Vest. And they're going to all form the former Titan, which is awesome. Stones do dig in. And then we go for a U-turn. Which is no damage, obviously. Um, but now we can go Porygon Z again, and we can put the Shadow Ball pressure on. We can put the Shadow Ball pressure on. So we'll go Porygon Z now. Not worried about the Stealth Rocks or anything like that, because of the Heavy Duty Boots. Nice and shiny. Get some health back from that Grassy Terrain, and so are they. But even if they have Focus Sash, no, the Leftovers. Did we already see Leftovers? I think we did. But they can't really KO us, I don't think. So let's go for a Shadow Ball now. Shadow Ball comes through. It is going to be Adaptability Terra Ghost boosted. And that should do a lot of damage to the Orphworm. It actually KOs with a critical hit. I don't know whether that crit mattered or not. Probably did. Probably did. Orphworm goes down though, which is fantastic. And then Pormot comes in. Pormot outspeeds us. We know Palm outspeeds us, and they can just go for a Thunder Punch and KO us. But do we do we do that? Do we do we do that? Hmm. This is a tough one. This is a real tough one. I think we have to let Glimora go down and bring Corviknight in. Toxic Spikes would be nice actually as well. Glimora again and Toxic Spikes would be nice. Definitely would be nice. So we'll go Lilith. There we go. Nice and shiny. Pointer zones do dig in, breaking our sash. And they go for a Thunder Punch, which will do it will two KOs, which is good. So we get Toxic Spikes up. That's something at least. And they're gonna get some health back from the grassy terrain. Now, here's the problem we've got. The grass has disappeared now, which is great. Do we go for a sludge wave or an earth power? I think we go for an earth power. They withdraw. Okay, I should have gone for a sludge wave. Should have gone for a sludge wave. Oh no, they went Bell Belossum. That's interesting. Nice and shiny. Gotta love it. I love seeing Belossum. It's just so cool. And um, we do get the poison on them and the self rocks, which is great. And we get a free Earth Power, which is even better. So Earth Power comes through. Could lower their special defense. Doesn't. They get hit by the poison, though, which is great. 
And now we simply go for a sludge wave. There's no point mortal spinning because Corviknight's not going to take too much damage anyway. We go for a sludge wave here every single time. We do outspeed, of course, and that's going to KO the Bellossom, no doubt. Yep, the Bellossom goes down. So now what are they going to do? Are they going to go into Rillaboom? Right, Rillaboom comes in. And it's going to get some uh, grassy terrain up after it gets poisoned, of course. Which is awesome, being poisoned. There's the grassy surge. It's just regular poisoned. It's not toxic, but it is what it is. Let's go for a sludge wave. We, we might live a grassy glide. I don't think we do. They're going to terrestrialize. Okay. What are they tearing into? What did they tear into? A grass type. Just to make sure the grassy glide KOs, you know? Just to make sure it KOs. Which is fair enough. That, that works out nicely for them. So grassy glide comes through. Boom. And that's going to KO our Glimora, unfortunately. As toxic spikes are set up. Now, should I have switched into Corviknight there? Probably. But I wasn't sure whether they'd tear a fire or anything like that. They might have predicted that. But hey hell, They're a grass type still, which is great for us. As poison's going to rack away at their health. Right, Corviknight can come in now. Corviknight can come in now. Stones do dig in. We go for a Roost here because they might switch out. They go for a Grassy Glide though. And that's going to definitely do no damage. But it will give them Rocky Helmet ch Chip. And then there's the Poison as well. So we go for a Roost now. We want to make sure we've got a good amount of health for that poor mop. Now that we're at full health pretty much, we go for a Brave Bird 100% of the time. Grassy Glide comes through. No damage of course. Rocky Helmet Chip. And then we go for a Brave Bird, which will KO the Rillaboom from here, right? Yes. Minimal recoil as well, because they, we lowered the health just enough with Rocky Helmet and Poison, which is great. So, Rillaboom being out, um, it all comes down to Corviknight. Because we know Porygon Z goes down to whatever this Pormot wants to go for, right? So, Pormot comes in. Like so. Stealth Rocks dig in. And they get poisoned, full, badly poisoned at that. So first I'm going to scout see how much damage they're going to do with Thunder Punch. They go for the Thunder Punch. Nearly gets the KO. We go for a Roost. And that's going to heal our health back up. This poor one might win actually. I don't know. I don't know whether it wins or not. Let's go for a Brave Bird. Screw it. I'm not going to Toxic stall this thing. They go for a Sub. Predicting... The roost. We go for a brave bird. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna toxic stall you. Don't worry. I'm, I'm not. I, I don't like toxic stalling. I don't care if it wins me the game. I don't want a toxic stall. I don't care if people get mad about that. It's whatever. It's a 20 minute timer. Toxic stall is not a friendly thing to do. So, poison's gonna rack in. They can't go for substitutes. They can't go for substitutes. We didn't get much recoil from that substitute either. And the grass is gonna disappear from the field. So they're not gonna get that residual recovery. I can take a thunder punch. Let's go for a brave bird. Thunder Punch comes through. We live on four. We go for a Brave Bird. That should KO. It does. And that is going to be the game. And the last Pokemon standing on the field is going to be Terra Ghost Porygon Z. As Noctis goes down valiantly. And we never reminded, we didn't even get to come back on the field. <laughs> GG. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Reese. They're going to lead off with Whiplash, which is going to be the Kilowattrol. As I led off with my Ninetales, now this thing, I'm looking at their team, they do have a rain setter, an, an automatic one like Ninetales is for snow, um, but they are a rain team, you can tell. So it's really weird, so this Kilowattril is probably going to have Rain Dance on it, in which case we're better off going for a Freeze Dry here as opposed to an Aurora Veil because they will outspeed us. So let's go for a Freeze Dry now. They go for a Volt Switch, interestingly enough, so that's fine. Um, and they're going to go back, but um, what are they going to go into though to take a Freeze Dry right now? Probably going to have to be the Hisuian Gudra, right? Belphegor comes in. That's going to be the Hisuian Gudra, right? Yeah, it is the Hisuian Gudra. So that's fine. And um, we go for the freeze dry. That's obviously going to do no damage. There we go. No damage. But we do freeze them, which is fantastic. So we're off to a very good start right now. Um, now, I am going to go for the Aurora Veil. But first, here's the teams. Um, looking at the team on the right. Looking at the team on the left. Team on the right is Reese's. Feel free to pause the video and take a, a quick analysis of your own. See what you think I should do, etc. Um, but let's go for an Aurora Veil now because there's no real reason not to. They are frozen solid after all, so I don't have to worry too much about a steel type move. They could fall out straight away with a flamethrower, but that won't do too much damage. As um, frozen solid is... I don't know, does flamethrower actually fall you out? I can't remember. I don't think it does. Anyway, let's switch out. 
Um, I'm going to go into Cerule Edge. Cerule seems like a good answer here. So we'll withdraw our Nine Tails. We'll go Cerule Edge. Cerule Edge can go for a Poltergeist or a Close Combat here. Um, close Combat will bait in the Tentacruel, I think. But to be honest with you, Poltergeist hits the entire team. Um, they are Frozen Solid, which is great. We're going to get a free switch in with Cerule Edge here. Um, so now what I can do is go for a Poltergeist or a Close Combat. And I'm leaning more towards Close Combat. But it will leave us a bit more vulnerable. So let's go for a Close Combat anyway. Screw it. Let's go for a Close Combat anyway. Doesn't even take out the Gudra, but it lowers our defenses. So if they fall out here and go for a Draco, it'll definitely take us down to a Sash. Um, won't even take us down to a Sash because of Rocky Helmet. But they are frozen solid, which is very unfortunate for them. As I'm now going to go for a Bitter Blade, just to get some extra damage off. And just in case they switch out. We go for the Bitter Blade. That Gudra is gone, I'm afraid. And now looking at the team, I'd say there's not really a lot that wants to come in and take on Porygon Z now. Which is amazing. So, Rocky Helmet does take its effect, but it's fine. And I'm hoping they go into the Swampert here. Swampert would be nice. Quintus comes in. Who's that going to be? Tentacruel. So, we know Tentacruel outspeeds us. We know that for a fact. Um, we've got a lot of the best switchings in the world. Part of me wants to go Corviknight. I'm going to go Corviknight and U-turn. And try and get Porygon Z in. Because we took out the Gudra. We can get an Agility up. We will be golden, sir. Absolutely golden. They go for a sword stance. Interesting. So that is terrifying in its own right. We need to go for a U-turn now. They go for a knockoff. That's fine. That's going to do no damage still. Thanks to the Aurora Veil. And the Rocky Helmet is going to damage them a little bit, which is great. We go for a U-turn. That's going to do a nice little bit of chip damage. Nothing too drastic. And now what do we go into? Now that we know it's a sword stance set, it is very much threatening. It is very much threatening. Do we go Nine Tails since it outspeeds? I think we can, because the Aurora Veil is going to wear off soon anyway. So let's go Ninetales. Tentacruel is one of the ones we need to weaken a little bit as well. For, for real. So we go for a Snow Warning. Um, they are going to pop their Leftovers, which is interesting. So they are a Leftovers Swords Dance set. I thought they'd be Heavy Duty Boots, but they're not. Um, obviously. So uh, anyway, we know they're going to go for a Knock Off or um, a Poison Jab here. So we should go for a Freeze Dry just to get damage off. It won't KO. It won't KO now. But it might freeze again, which would be funny. Poison Jab comes through. And obviously, that's not going to KO us thanks to the Aurora Veil. And I think the Aurora Veil wears off this turn, right? I think it does. Pretty sure it does. It doesn't. But we outspeed and KO with Freeze Dry anyway. So it's not the end of the world. Freeze Dry comes through. And the Tentacruel goes down, which is fantastic. So we just need to get Porygon Zed in now and go for an Agility. And we should be all right. There's the Aurora Veil wearing off as well, which is awesome. Whiplash comes back in. There's the Killer Watchful. So um, we need to be careful here because it's time to decide. Do we want Aurora Veil to back up Porygon Z or not? Do we just sack off Corviknight here? Or sack off Cerule Edge for that matter? I think we go Cerule Edge. I think we go Cerule Edge. Because the snow's going to wear off soon anyway. So we go Cerule Edge. Malice. Like so. Because the last remaining ones are water type. So there's no point keeping Cerule Edge around. Um, Voltage doesn't even KO us, which is, proves it's not specs at least. And what are they going to go into here? Probably the Kingdra or the Ludicolo, because the Swampert definitely doesn't outspeed, but it can take hits. Swindle comes in. Who's Swindle? Swampert. Nice and shiny as well. Okay, nice. Um, let's just go for a Poltergeist to go weaken it a little bit, and then we'll let Cerulege go down to it. Poltergeist comes through. Assault Vest. I'm glad we got this Poltergeist off. I'm glad we got the Poltergeist stuff. As Liquidation comes through, that's going to KO us. So, if they're a Salt Vest, if they get a crit, doesn't matter. If they're a Salt Vest, like they are, then what's the best thing to do here? Because the snow's going to stop. Are we better off going... Because they'll have Miracle, right? They'll have Miracle, And that means we can't necessarily KO with Porygon Z. So, are we better off going into something else to uh, scare it out? I mean, I want to go Nine Tails, that's for sure, and get the Aurora Veil up. I think that's that's the, that's a safe bet. So we'll get the Snow Warning up once again, and we'll go for an Aurora Veil. Why not? Aurora Veil comes through. That's going to make our team very hard to kill for them. Very hard to kill for them. And they go for a Liquidation with the Swampert, which is going to KO us. So. They got damage off on us, but it's whatever. So let, let's see what we can do here. I, I want to weaken this one per a little bit more before we bring Porygon in. So I'm going to go Corviknight now. And we'll U-turn. We'll straight up U-turn. Um, or Brave Bird, U-turn. U-turn is probably the best option because they might go Killer Watchful now. 
They do withdraw the Swampert. Are they going to do Killer Watcher like I expected? Whiplash, there's the Killer Watcher. So Killer Watcher could obviously take a Brave Bird, Body Press, U-Turn, everything. It can, it's a definitely a good switch in. Um, so we go for a U-Turn, breaking a potential Sash, which is good. And uh, we're going to go, Corviknight's going to come on back to us. So let's go into, if the Aurora Bell's up, we can go Paragon Z, no problem. I think that's right. Yeah, we go Paragon Z, no problem. We go Paragon Z, no problem. -o. There we go. Nice and shiny as well. So let's go for that agility now. They go for a Volt Switch, which is fine. There's no damage thanks to the Aurora Veil. And they're probably going to go Swamp It. If I had to guess, they go Swamp It. Gambit comes in. Who's Gambit? The Ludicolo. Nice and shiny. We go for an agility. Now we outspeed everything on their team. Provided they don't somehow get a Rain Dance up. But I'm pretty confident we can take this thing out of a Tri Attack. So let's go for a Tri Attack now. Tri Attack comes through. Boom, boom, boom. Doesn't get the KO, but it does burn them, which is interesting. Definitely burns them. And they go for a Rain Dance. Interesting. So this is the Rain Dance Sweeper. This is the Rain Dance Help. Very interesting. So um, we just go for another Tri Attack. We should outspeed still, I think. Yeah, we outspeed still thanks to the agility. So that, that's the Ludicolo gone down, which is great. Lovely, jovely. Um, the, the Kingdra might outspeed us, but we have got the Aurora Veil up, so I'm not too worried. Whiplash comes back in. Are you Choice Scarfed or something? If the Choice Scarfed, the KO was here. Let's go for a Tri Attack. No, they're not Choice Scarfed. Tri Attack comes through. Takes out the Killer Watch Roll. Porygon Z putting in work right now. Putting in the finest of work right now. Right, Nori comes in. Who's Nori? Kingdra probably. Yeah, Kingdra comes in nice and shiny. And um, we go for a Tri Attack every single time right now. Tri Attack comes through. Oh, it does a lot of damage to Kingdra. They go for a pump and they miss. <laughs> Poor Reese. Poor Reese. Let's go for a try attack again. We still outspeed regardless of their swift swim. So Hydro Pump wouldn't have KO'd us because of the Aurora Veil, but it would have weakened us to the point where if we don't KO the Swampert, Miracle isn't going to work. So because we've got so much health left, I don't think Miracle will KO us. I could be wrong, and they might not even have Miracle. Um, Let's go for the try attack once again. Tri attack comes through. Boom, boom, boom. Doesn't get the KO. They go for the mirror coat, but look. Ah, uh, no, it does KOs anyway. So there we go. Hydro Pump Mist didn't matter too much. <laughs> Paragon said did really good there, though. Really good. Um, so we'll go Pre Marina now. Pre Marina can take care of this thing, no problem. There we go. Pre Marina comes in. And we just simply go for a Surf. There's no real reason not to. Surf comes through. We outspeed anyway. Swampert goes down, and that is going to be the game. So GG Reese has some pretty fun one. It was a bit of hacks, but you know what? It is what it is. That's the game we play, right? GG.